very pleased to be able to uh, uh, make this presentation. And uh, the quote uh, on the screen serves me as a caveat uh, because um, legal culture would be a topic uh, probably more appropriate for a legal anthropologist, uh, whereas I am mostly a private international law um, lecturer. Um, in addition to that, uh, we are going to focus um, on dispute resolution and uh, in, a, in addition to uh, civil procedure, we are going to touch upon uh, issues of uh, criminal procedure, on which I am also not an expert. Um, so, as I say, uh, in, as, I, as it is said on the screen, if you want justice, you've come to the wrong place. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I am going to do my best to give you an introduction to what I think um, is the legal culture in, in Kazakhstan as regards dispute resolution. Um, information uh, which I have uh, used uh, to make this presentation is mostly taken from three sources, um, which are all of them uh, uh, in, in the English language, because I cannot, I cannot read Russian, so that is another, another drawback for my research. Uh, I, but um, on the one hand, there are statutory instruments, uh, such as the Civil Procedure Code, uh, which, mm, for which there is a translation uh, into English, a, a very poor translation, I would, I would say, but nevertheless, it can, be, uh, it can be used. There is also a, a, a translation of, this, of the civil code, of the criminal code, of the um, code of, of criminal proceedings. Um, uh, but uh, what I have found more, more interesting are, for instance, uh, reports by human rights organizations on uh, criticizing uh, the state of the, uh, of the uh, of, of criminal proceedings, of, of criminal procedural law, uh, in the state of uh, the law enforcement uh, uh, regime in, in Kazakhstan, and on the side of civil uh, procedure, on the side of commercial disputes, I have used mostly um, uh, articles and papers uh, written uh, mostly by international, uh, international law firms which uh, write uh, introductions to the law of Kazakhstan uh, for the purpose of uh, advertising themselves, for the purpose of giving advice to international clients who are thinking of investing in, in Kazakhstan, and they provide useful, uh, a, a useful um, uh, introduction to, uh, to the law of Kazakhstan and to the law of, uh, of, of dispute resolution. Um, since the topic was legal culture, I tried to do some research into what legal culture was, um, and I found a very interesting, uh, a very interesting definition by Nelken, um, uh, which says that legal culture, in its most general sense, is one way of describing relatively stable patterns of legally oriented social behavior and attitudes. The identifying elements of legal culture range from facts about institutions, such as the number and role of lawyers, or the ways judges are appointed and controlled, to various forms of behavior, such as litigation or prison raids, and at the other extreme, more nebulous aspects of ideas, values, aspirations, and mentalities. Like culture itself, legal culture is about who we are, not just what we do. So, um, distilling the, the, the principles from this definition, there are stable patterns of social behavior. For instance, um, the, the economic behavior uh, uh, as, as expressed in agreements, agreements with an economic content. So how are those agreements? How are, the, how are, are they made? Are they respected, for instance? The role of institutions, for instance, uh, uh, what is a family in, in Kazakhstan? Um, what are, uh, how strong is uh, the family as, um, uh, as a stronghold of, of society or as a component of society, ideas, values and aspirations, aspirations and, and mentalities which not only are, um, as we are going to say in the next slide, not only are shaped by law but shape law, 
And in addition to that, um, the substantive content of the law, um, so the contents of social and state reproach. So in, in my opinion, uh, not being an anthropologist, not being even a, a philosopher of law, uh, for me, ethics uh, become law when the reproach doesn't come from the conscience and comes from society or comes from the state. So the contents of that, of that social reproach or of that state reproach, um, in, in my view, are the contents of the different norms which provoke that reproach when they are breached, when they are, uh, when they are not followed. So as I have said, culture shapes norms uh, which would be, for instance, the domain of sociology, in my, in my view. But um, uh, norms shape culture uh, to a great extent. And this would be probably the domain of juridical science. So, although uh, lawyers, to a large extent, especially in civil law countries, limit themselves to interpreting what law says, what law says, uh, how to apply law to specific uh, sit situations, uh, in, in, in real life, uh, juridical science also uh, must go as far as uh, uh, try uh, as, as seeing how those norms transform society, and the, is this second aspect the one in which I am going to focus? How civil how civil procedure and criminal procedural norms shape legal culture in Kazakhstan? What can we learn about Kazakh society? looking at, uh, at, at Kazakh norms. Um, as I say, uh, this is only half of the job. The other half would be the job of a sociologist, seeing how, how, uh, how, Kazakh, how Kazakh society is and how that society has shaped uh, the, the norms that are applied uh, to, to the individuals of the Kazakh society. Okay, um, just to give you an, a broad overview of what I consider the most important legal cultures of the world, uh, I believe that um, the concept of legal tradition or legal system can be equated to the, to the concept of, of legal culture in the sense that um, uh, it is a, a body of norms or a body of legal concepts which is shaped by a specific mentality of specific peoples um, and, um, it, and also shapes that mentality. So there is a, 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 a two-way influence. Society influences the legal system and the legal system influences society. Um, that is all the more true in the case of, um, of colonized countries. So for instance, common law countries, the, the, the origin of common law is England, is England but uh, due to the British Empire, uh, that a common law system has been transplanted to many, to many other countries and it, in a way it has shaped dispute resolution culture and legal culture in all, the, all, all of those countries which had not, which had nothing absolutely to do with the English medieval culture which helped to shape the English common law. So as I say there, is this, there are civil law countries uh, for instance in continental Europe, in Latin America uh, in French-speaking Africa, Japan could also be called um, a civil law country. Russia could also be called a, a common law, a civil law country. And um, the most um, uh, um, uh, striking feature, or the, 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 the feature that defines a civil law country, is probably the fact that, it, that uh, this legal system uh, endeavors to um, uh, to um, create bodies of law. Uh, which can be applied to, uh, which may be applied to every possible situation. Those bodies of law are called codes. So um, they, they, um, this, uh, this civil law perspective uh, comes from the, the French, the French rationalism, uh, which uh, has the aspiration to, um, uh, to um, uh, start from abstract principles and deduce from those principles uh, all sorts of, of norms, also all, all sorts of, um, of norms which uh, may be um, included in a, in, a, in, a, in a code, in a civil code, in a criminal code, uh, in a code of civil procedure, etc. 
Whereas common law countries are, um, are for instance, England, uh, the mother of all common law countries, the Commonwealth, the, US, uh, US, uh, the United States of America, English-speaking Africa. Um, as we are going to say, the most striking feature of common law countries is judge-made law. So whereas, um, whereas in civil law countries the judge is the, the voice of the law, uh, uh, as, um, as Montesquieu defined him, um, in common law countries the judge is a creator of the law. He has that role, which would be in a way unthinkable in civil law countries. Mixed jurisdictions, which, are, which have been partly colonized by two legal systems, such as Scotland or South Africa, and Sharia countries, where um, um, to some extent, to, 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 uh, to a large extent, or to some extent, uh, the legal system is influenced or is totally um, occupied by religious norms um, taken from the Quran. Uh, we can have Northern Africa, Middle, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and uh, why not, maybe one day, Kazakhstan. Uh, you would be surprised uh, to know that uh, some of our LLM students are doing uh, law thesis in uh, uh, how to introduce um, Islamic law in certain aspects of um, the legal system of Kazakhstan. Um, so, just to give you some more background on legal traditions, uh, and just to take just the, the two most uh, um, uh, expanded traditions, the, the common law and, and the civil law. Common law comes from Anglo-Norman Anglo -Norman law, um, which is also, in a way, um, which also de derives, in a way, from, from Roman law, but through different, through different ways. Uh, Whereas civil law countries is uh, mostly Roman, Roman and kind of, of, of a Roman and canon law origin, um, systematized uh, by uh, by German scholars and, 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 and the French uh, rationalist tradition. Common law countries are very empirical and inductive, so that uh, um, they do not look for abstract principles. They look for um, si um, real situations where uh, a, a, a judge in the past has, um, has given some sort of solution and they try to extract from that precedent um, a legal rule which will le later be applied by, uh, by future judges. Whereas in some <coughs> countries there is a, a rationalistic and deductive um, um, way of uh, approach to law. In common law countries there is case law, whereas in civil law countries there are codes. Uh, in common law countries, there is uh, a very, a very rich tradition and ancient, ancient tradition of adversarial litigation, um, which they cherish very much, both in civil law proceedings and in criminal proceedings, where the judge is a mere arbiter, uh, is a mere, uh, a mere um, a coordinator of the proceedings, and the parties, uh, the claimant or the defendant, or the prosecutor and the defendant, fight each other. To reach, uh, a, 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 to reach uh, an appropriate judgment. Whereas in civil law countries, there is a mix of adversarial and inquisitorial litigation, in which the judge is, in some cases, the one who um, uh, uh, not only um, uh, leads the proceedings, but um, uh, takes the main role in the proceedings. He, he tries to reach the, the, the truth. Uh, he, he doesn't have at all a passive role. He, makes quest he asks questions, he orders uh, injunctions, he um, asks for evidence to be, to be, to be submitted, etc. In common law countries, as far as contracts are concerned, uh, party autonomy is king so that uh, mm, uh, almost everything uh, can be introduced in a contract, whereas in civil law countries, the principle of good faith um, is at the same level as uh, party autonomy. So uh, the parties are allowed to introduce any kind of clause in, the, um, in, in their dealings. They, they are allowed to, uh, to make uh, any kind of agreement, but subject to good faith, which is a, a legal concept which uh, um, needs uh, to be interpreted in each situation, in each time, in, in, uh, and uh, which changes as society changes. 
now we we, not, we are now going to um, uh, to go more deeply into um, legal uh, into dispute resolution culture, and we are going to define a dispute as a controversy among two or more parties about their rights and obligations arising out of a relationship regulated by law. So I believe that this uh, this definition, which is entirely my own, um, is broad enough to encompass any kind of dispute which can be solved by, uh, by legal means. And on the, at the same time, it does not encompass a dispute which does not have any interest for a legal system, for, um, for, 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 for the state. Um, and what is a dispute solution mechanism? I have defined it as a regulated process whereby the parties themselves or a third party adjudicator reach a solution for the controversy. So the, the object of a dispute resolution mechanism is to find a solution for the controversy. Most, in, in most of the times, um, uh, finding what the rights and obligations of the parties are, but not necessarily, not necessarily. The parties may make an agreement at, at, at some stage of the, of the proceedings uh, where they find a solution without any need to uh, define clearly what their rights and obligations are. Simply continuing, for instance, um, going on with the commercial relationship that they that they had, and this is what I explain uh, in this in this chart, which is partly mine and partly uh, made by other authors, um, in which I wanted to focus on uh, four of the of the characteristics of four of the main dispute dispute resolution mechanisms: <coughs> negotiation. Of the, four of the most important dispute resolution mechanisms such as negotiation, mediation, arbitration, and court litigation. So in negotiation, the decision-making power is uh, entirely, entirely belongs to the parties. Uh, in mediation, it also belongs to the parties. But in arbitration and court litigation, the parties let a third, uh, a third adjudicator come into their midst to define what their rights and obligations are. Um, Depending on whether um, a, a society makes a lot of use of negotiation, mediation, or arbitration and, and, and litigation, we can know a lot about that society. We can know a lot about whether that society is a, a society very dependent of the state, or a society which is very rich, a, very, a, a civil society which is, which is very strong, which knows how to solve its own problems without the need to um, to um, have access to state dispute resolution mechanisms or third party dispute resolution mechanisms. Um, uh, the control over the process is also, it also belongs to the parties in negotiation and mediation. In arbitration it belongs to the parties but also to the arbitrator. And in court litigation it belongs entirely to the, to the, to the judge, to the, to the third party uh, adjudicator. Um, and at the same time, uh, we can know a lot about, the, about uh, uh, we, we may know a lot, in my opinion. We can learn a lot about the, about the society by learning what are, what are the preferred dispute resolution mechanisms. The degree of formality is very low in negotiation and mediation. In, in arbitration, it's medium because it is, uh, it's increasingly very formal, a very formalized way of dispute resolution, and very high in court litigation extremely high in court litigation, depending, some, uh, of, of the, depending on, the, on the legal system in which you are, depending on the country where you are, it may be extremely high, to the point that uh, the, the, the goal of court proceedings may be said not to reach the truth, but to reach a procedural truth, which is not exactly the same, because for instance, the law of evidence may not admit certain types of evidence which for uh, an independent observer, which would be, for instance, very necessary to know what really has happened. Um, and the way that evidence is valued may be relatively different uh, from um, the way an independent observer would value with evaluate that evidence and the way a, a judge would evaluate that evidence. Enforceability, um, um, this also may tell us a lot about, uh, about the society because um, in arbitration and court litigation, uh, the force of the state 
uh, comes to the help of the parties. So there is physical, the physical coercion, which is uh, the, um, uh, the monopoly of the state, uh, co um, can be found in arbitration and court litigation, whereas there is in principle no state enforceability in negotiation and mediation. There may be sometimes uh, neg in negotiation and mediation if the parties um, um, enter into a settlement agreement which is later on uh, not arised or it is later on enforced, etc. Um, I am going from now on to, uh, going to focus on courts, courts on, and, only, and only courts um, as dispute resolution mechanisms. And courts are not only mm, uh, useful mm, as, um, as, 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 as mechanisms um, to, to learn about, about the dispute resolution uh, traditions and, uh, of a society, they are also useful as, as enforcers of the rule of law. So um, you cannot learn how strong the law of a country is if you cannot, if you don't learn how strong its courts are, because courts are the ones who enforce the law. So no matter how uh, how good the the legal system of a country is, how 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 good the substantive law of a country is, if you do not have a strong court system, um, you don't have a strong legal system. So um, so courts reflect some sort of some some tradition in society, a litigation tradition, but they also reflect how good, um, how good the law of a country is. Um, as I say, because uh, courts enforce that law. Uh, I have, I have um, um, made a definition, I have a, a definition of what rule of law is, but I am not going to read it. Types of court proceedings, as you probably can deduce it uh, yourselves, um, I have made a, a, a very simple classification in civil and commercial, criminal, administrative and labor. There may be also juvenile courts, there may be also specialized courts in, 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 in many other fields. Um, civil and commercial, um, may, uh, they may, may be said to deal with um, those kinds of, of relationships which, um, in which the parties can make um, settlements, in which party autonomy plays a big role. Whereas criminal uh, uh, proceedings are uh, those proceedings in which um, uh, um, uh, the, the, the procedure tries to ascertain whether there has been a violation of, criminal, of a criminal norm. Administrative uh, proceedings would be those proceedings um, where there has been a, there, there has been a relationship uh, um, and a breach of, a, uh, of, a, of an obligation in a relationship between an individual and the state, in the individual and the uh, and the um, and the uh, and the administration, and labor uh, courts would be um, um, more specialized courts for employment disputes, for instance, or or, or um, uh, social security disputes. Uh, just a very brief uh, introduction to the structure of courts in Kazakhstan, which is very similar to the to to the structure of courts everywhere in the, in the world, both in civil law countries and in, and in, um, and in, in common law countries. So there are, there are uh, first, instant, first instant, instant courts. There, is always, uh, there are always appellate courts uh, because the right to appeal a decision is almost a fundamental right. Uh, there are, uh, and, and this is a bit peculiar of the Kazakh court system, there are Kazakhian courts in addition to the Supreme Court. So there are there are four levels instead of the the, the 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 more usual three levels that you can find in many other countries. Um, um, sadly enough, sadly enough, uh, for uh, for many human rights reports and many um, uh, and many international law firms, both Kazakh and international, the most striking feature of the judicial system in Kazakhstan is its level of, of corruption and its level and its lack of independence. So uh, sadly enough, this is mentioned again and again as, um, as a caveat 
for uh, foreign investors or as, a, as, a, as something to improve um, radically. Um, I have simply uh, stated some of the, the, some of the um, uh, statements uh, which reflect this complaint, this, this complaint by, uh, by human rights activists, by human rights NGOs, um, by, by foreign governments which advise, which give advice to their own investors come to Kazakhstan. Uh, although um, there is a tiny percentage of uh, reports uh, which do not um, do not give so much importance to corruption and lack of independence. Corruption uh, would would take place in in those cases where uh, where there is bribery, for instance, and lack of independence would uh, take place in those cases where um, an inferior court is. Uh, mm, unduly influenced by a superior body, by a superior body, uh, be it the government or a superior court, to uh, make a decision uh, which the inferior court would not have taken otherwise. Um, key statements in civil, in civil litigation, um, just to mention, um, that uh, they are uh, relatively similar to the uh, mm, to the standard uh, stages in many other in many other countries, uh, reflecting um, reflecting the influence of the of the Russian uh, civil system in Kazakhstan. Um, so we have the filing of the claim, the notification to the defendant, the the, the, the hearing or trial. Um, the judgment, the appeal, and the enforcement of the judgment. So um, this um, this only tells us about um, uh, how similar we are to to, to the Russian um, legal, to the Russian civil procedure, or, uh, or to many other legal systems. And then I am going to focus. Uh, how how many of the time? Okay. So. Um, Key features of their civil of three civil proceedings are rationality. So uh, the, the the process of applying the law is a syllogism, like many like in, like in many other countries. So the law asks the judge to um, uh, to to obtain evidence and apply the law over that evidence. There is respect of the right to be heard and right of defence, and there is uh, there is at least um, in, in on paper a equality of the parties. Um, one uh, one uh, feature which is peculiar of the civil proceedings in Kazakhstan is, is speed, is speed, and that that is good. Uh, one negative um, uh, one negative characteristic is the bias towards local courts and local parties, or towards the state. This is noticed not just in the law when you read the law, but it is also practice. Many investors complain that in their dealings with the government uh, there is a bias towards the state, for instance, in uh, litigation, in, in, in oil disputes, for instance. Um, there is a central role of the judge, which is not so much reflected in the, in the law, but in, but in the practice. And also another striking feature of, the, of, of civil proceedings are its con constant changes. Uh, civil procedure in Kazakhstan has been uh, amended and amended and reformed and reformed again and again, and it is very um, uh, easy to, 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 re to introduce reforms because the Supreme Court has that has that power to introduce reforms. Not the, the, it is not necessary uh, to 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 enact a law uh, by uh, in, in the Parliament for civil procedures to be amended. Um, Uh, there is limited discovery. I will not enter into that. Damages are the, the most usual remedy, which is common in other legal systems. There is an underuse of ADR, which, uh, which means that uh, proceedings in Kazakhstan are not as evolved as in, other, as in other Western societies, where there is an emphasis on ADR, a, a emphasis on alternative dispute, dispute resolution mechanisms, such as such arbitration or mediation. Um, um, there are contingency fees and, and, and costs borne by each by each party, um, which speak about 
a relatively mature litigation culture. And there is no recognition of foreign judgments, which is um, a characteristic of societies um, which uh, are not completely open to, uh, to, 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 foreign, to other foreign countries. So if, if, if Kazakhstan were, uh, was a country um, open to investment, completely open to investment, uh, it would have taken care of, uh, of this issue. It would have made it easier for foreign judgments to be uh, recognized and enforced in Kazakhstan. And um, much more quickly, key stages in criminal proceedings, uh, supervised investigation, arrest and charging, trial, sentencing and appeal, which is also relatively common in many in, in, in other in other legal systems. But key features uh, of the of criminal proceedings um, are, uh, to some extent, uh, uh, away from uh, what is common in, in, in Europe or in the United States. Um, we some people wonder whether we still have. Uh, the, the weight of Soviet heritage, um, where the, the safeguards for the defendant, where um, uh, well, there was a lack of, of, of safeguards for the defendant. There is a nominally presumption of, of innocence, but human rights standards may not be fully applied. And this is something uh, that many human rights activists and many reports uh, complain about. Um, uh, uh, human rights standards are standards such as, for instance, um, uh, the right to be heard, the right to uh, to, um, to, inter to to submit uh, evidence, etc. Uh, there is a separation of the investigative body, the prosecutor's office, and the criminal and the criminal judge, which is also uh, in, in a way similar to other legal systems. Uh, but it's also peculiar of the Kazakh legal system and, and, uh, and I suppose of, of Soviet, of former Soviet countries, the, 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 the great role given to the prosecutor's office. There is a low level of professionalism of law enforcement bodies, so of, of, the, of the police. There is, and this is very important, um, there is in practice no hideous corpus procedure. So there is a, um, there is a possibility of detention uh, for uh, for a relatively long period of time, and there are and there are mixed inquisitorial and adversarial proceedings. So there is still a big role of judge, uh, where um, at the same time that uh, the law admits a full uh, intervention of the prosecutor and the and the defense attorney. Um, there is limited publicity of trial, another problem. Uh, there is a hybrid jury system. For some, another problem. Although uh, the jury system is also criticized in many uh, in many legal systems, for instance, in, in my own country, where it where it has been introduced. Uh, so, so for some, the jury system is a is a safeguard, um, is a is a way of uh, 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 securing securing the rights of the defendant. Uh, but for some other for some other uh, scholars and experts. Uh, and, and for many, and for many people, the jury system uh, is, is, a, is a burden, and there is a possibility to appeal the judgment. Finally, conclusions: civil law culture influence is civil law culture is in, uh, influenced by Soviet heritage. Uh, might be one of the um, one of the uh, features of the of Kazakh of Kassel, of legal of the Kassel legal system. Uh, so rationalism influenced by, by Soviet heritage. Um, relatively, uh, we have relatively up-to-date dispute resolution mechanisms, at least on paper, but there is a gap between legal standards and their enforcement. And that, that, that will be all. Thank you very much. Sorry for, for my delay. <laughs>